Hey everyone, this is adding and subtracting rational expressions with unlike denominators. Um, as a math person, I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, I'm not super in love with the idea of this section, but it is what it is. Now, the, re the thing that you have to remember, or it would help if you remembered anyway, you don't have to, I mean, it's your life, um, is that when you add or subtract fractions, so 1 6 and 2 fourths, which have obviously you'd reduced to 1 half, but just stay with me. So say we're going to add these two together. I do not have the same denominator. And this works with subtraction as well, incidentally enough, so I need to come up with a common denominator. There's two ways to do it. Number one, you can make like a factor or multiples list, so 6, 12, 18, 4 goes up 4, 8, 12. Find the least common multiple, which is 12, and then we'll just convert them into having a common denominator. So to get to 12, I need to multiply 6 times 2. So if I multiply this times 2, I'm going to multiply this times 2 as well, because if you do something to the denominator, you need to do it to the numerator. Uh, so I end up with 2 over 12. Similarly, 4 times 3 gives me the 12 that I need, but I need to multiply the top by 3 as well and get 6 over 12. I'm going to add them together. Uh, you keep the common denominator, and then you add or subtract the numbers on top, so 2 plus 6. In the case of rational expressions, well, you'll want to reduce it as well, of course. I forgot about that two-thirds. So that's it when you have regular fractions, but rational expressions are often set up in that same format. So what we're going to do here, uh, or we're dealing with today, are ones that have uh, unlike denominators. Now, another thing that you could have done instead of making a factor list is just multiply 6 times 4 to get 24, and then 4 by 6 to get 24. It would change, it would all reduce down, but sometimes it's easier as opposed to coming up with some multiples list simply to use a process where you multiply one by the other because that certainly will give you a common denominator so six times four gives you twenty four and four times six gives you twenty four as well this is much more likely what you'll end up doing in uh... when you get to rational expression sixteen over twenty four eight goes into it twice and three times so two-thirds so that's it for basic uh adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Hopefully you remember that. Also it helps if you have seen the video on doing rational expressions with like denominators, like these. Uh, but I'm going to flip through these and get to ones that have unlike denominators because I, I guess I just like to punish myself or something. Anyway, uh, otherwise this video would have no function. Now, when I have unlike denominators, I need to think, well, what do I need to do to get them to be the same? I would change as little as I can get away with. The only difference between 4y and 2y is that the 2y needs to be multiplied by 2 to get 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. So this is the only one I'm going to change. Times 2, times 2. So what I get end up with is 12x over, and uh, 12 times uh, 2 times 2 is, of course, 4y. So this is my second term I'm going to work with. Here's my first. I'm adding these two together, so I'm going to do 2y over 4y plus... 12x over 4y. And like I said before, if you haven't seen the video on doing uh, on solving these when they have like denominators, which they do now, you probably need to. I'll reference them and a few things, but if it seems confusing, I'll give a little bit more explanation on how that works in those videos. Anyway, keep your denominator uh, 2y plus 12x. There's absolutely no way we can combine these two because one's an x and one's a y. It's kind of like having two nickels and 12 quarters. I mean, you you can't just add two nickels to it and they count as quarters. That doesn't work. So anyway, um, I just need to see if they have, in order to do my simplification, I need to see if there are anything that these three numbers have in common, or three terms anyway. Well, they don't have variables in common. Because this one has a y and this one has a y does not mean you can reduce it. It has to be in all of them or you can't get rid of it. But 2 does go into all of them. So if I reduce uh, 2 by 2, I end up with 1y. And if I end up reducing 12, so this is 2 by 2 equals 1, 12 by 2 equals 6, 4 by 2 equals 2. That way you know where these numbers are coming from. So y plus 6x, I got that right here. And then the 4y divided by 2 becomes 2y. So what I end up with in the end of all things is y plus 6x over 2y. It's not that bad. It will get worse in a second, but uh, this one's relatively similar but it has a little bit of a you know change in it the big deal here is I have to worry about the number 
and the uh, variable term. So as I said before, it's easier if you just multiply whatever you need to from this set as much as you can uh, to make it work, sort of like the 6 times 4 thing. So instead of thinking in my head, let's make a multiples list, I'm just going to do 4 times 5. And y to the third is bigger than y, so I don't need to change it anymore. So times 5 up here as well. 3 times 5 is 15x, and on the bottom now I have 20y to the third. Now, not as nice with the other one. Uh, f minus 4y, well that didn't change color like it was supposed to. Negative 4y over 5y. Now in this case, I'm going to multiply it by the 4 like it seems logical to do, but I need more y's. So really, y to the third is y times y times y, and right now I only have one, so I need two more of them. So I'm going to do it times 5 or 4y squared. On the top, I'm going to multiply by 4y squared also. Now, my new denominator, of course, is 20y to the third. And then on top, negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. And uh, I end up with, this is to the second, this is to the first. So you add them together, and you get y to the third. So those are my two terms, and I'm going to put them together for one final combination of things. So I end up with 15x over 20y to the third. And I'm just going to go ahead and extend this out, because I will have common denominators now. So minus 16y to the third. So I need to look around and think, well, do any of these things reduce? Because this is the answer if they don't. Seems pretty crazy that that would be the answer. But if I go and look at 20, well, 4 goes into 20, and it goes into 16, but it doesn't go into 15. 3 doesn't go into 16 or 20, so that's out. Um, and none of them, and they don't have any variables that they share. So this is it. That's the answer. That's the answer to this section. Even though it looks a little bit crazy, that's as far down as you can simplify it. So, I mean, you can't... Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. You can't make something happen cool. that doesn't want cool, cool. to happen. It's just one of those things about how this sort of thing goes. Okay, so you probably noticed it kicked over this question really fast. My computer kind of went to pot like right after uh, the last problem. So in this question, we have a much more seemingly advanced uh, common denominator dilemma, but it's really not. Uh, five n minus five times n minus two really should look like five times n minus two. That's what our common denominator is going to be because that's what this looks like. Treat this almost like it's in parentheses. It'll make it much easier. So in order to do that, I need to multiply both of these times 5. So this becomes 20 over 5 times n minus 2. And by the way, you can put the 5 in the front. The order doesn't matter. Multiplying, it's commutative. And on the minus, I'm going to multiply this times n minus 2 and this times n minus 2 as well. The bottom part's easy. It just becomes 5 times n minus 2. On top, you're going to have to do a little bit of the um, FOIL process, or it's technically a distributive uh, property here, so let's just do that. I'm going to do it kind of over here in this section. 4n minus 2 times n minus 2. 4n squared minus 8n minus 2n plus 4. So eventually it all comes out to being 4 Oops, I meant to change the color back to the green because so, that would have made the flow go better. 4 times n squared minus 10n plus 4 because combine these two together. Yeah, combine like terms. Now, the only other weirdness about this, well, most of the other weirdness, is that this is minus this entire term on top. We're still going to keep the same denominator, so it's still going to be this. That works. Uh, we just have to treat this as a subtraction. In order to make it look easier for my brain, what I always do is sort of uh, convert it, and I'll do that below here, into a plus question, but I'm just going to sort of treat the minus as if I'm distributing a negative 1 to that term. So negative 1, 4n squared minus 10n plus 4. Once I do that, I don't know what that was. That line made no sense. I meant to do this. Uh, it becomes negative 4n squared plus 10n minus 4. Now, that's what's going to go up here. So basically, I'm just changing the signs. So that's what I'm going to do. Negative plus, and then this becomes, of course, minus. 
all I have to do now is combine any like terms in the um, numerator. So if I mark the squareds up with one line, this gets one line and the dots. My dots are the only things I have that go together. So 20 minus 4 is, of course, 16. So negative 4n squared plus 10n minus 16. Now, you could try to factor it to see if it will factor. Um, it won't, incidentally enough. Um, 16 doesn't factor. 16 and 4 don't work out in a way that will get you n minus 2, so it's kind of a useless gesture here. But if you wanted to factor this to see if an n minus 2 comes out of it, if it does, you can cancel those. And that's a good thing. But it doesn't here, so I'm not going to bother you with making you sitting through and watch it. So I'm going to do one more of these, and then that's going to be it. This is the last one I'm going to do, and I should say that it is a beast, so hold on tight. Um, in this case, it's easier for me to go ahead and just multiply each term by itself. So that would mean that my combined term or my common denominator will come from the combination of these things. 3k to the fourth, because it's k to the third and k to the first, plus 9k to the third minus 18k to the third minus 54k squared. And I'm going to combine these together. Now there is a common factor here, but I'm not going to deal with that right now. I'm going to deal with it in a minute instead. Uh, so anyway, if I multiply this term in the denominator by k plus 3, I need to multiply 4k times k plus 3 as well. And of course, I end up with 4k squared plus 12k. Similarly, with the 4, I need to multiply by this denominator. So 4 times 3k to the third minus 18k squared gives me 12k to the third power minus. 50, no, 72k squared. So these are my two denominators, or these are my two numerators, sorry. I'll call them n1 and n2. And this is my denominator, so I'm going to put it all together here in the middle. And since it's an addition problem, I'll just do 4k squared plus 12k plus 12k to the third minus 72k squared. It's a beast. 3k to the fourth minus 9k to the third minus 54k squared. So I just need to see <clears throat> in the numerator is there anything that combine? Are there any like terms? And there are. Uh, this one is a like term to this one. You may want to mark them up. I tend to put two lines if it's a squared and three lines if it's a cubed, that sort of thing. So 4 minus 672 is negative 68. So I end up putting it in standard form with 12k to the third minus 68k squared plus 12k over 3k to the fourth minus 9k to the third minus 54k squared. So from here, where do you go? Well, you have to look for common factors in the top and the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. Like I said, this is a long problem. K comes in all of these sections here. So I'm just going to deal with sort of working that out in the way it's supposed to. Technically, 2 pops out of it, too. but um, And you're welcome to pull that out if you think it's going to be necessary. But for me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because 4 is not going to come out of here, so I'm not going to cancel it. So you, even if you don't use it, you sort of have to redistribute it back out. So I'm just going to look to see. The thing that makes the most sense is probably take the K out. So it becomes 12k squared minus 68k plus 12. On the other side of things, this these all have at least k squared in them. So and 3, so it's 3k squared. This becomes k squared minus 3k and minus 18. Yeah. So for these you can factor them, and you'll probably have to eventually. Uh, but really here, this is where you do your sort of 
crossing things out, you'll notice that this is k to the first and this is k to the second. So this goes away, and this is left neutral. Uh, I can factor, I can't get a good factor out of this, so I'm just going to leave it the way that it is. And I'll probably do something similar to the bottom as well. So I end up with negative, or sorry, positive 12k squared minus 68k plus 12 over 3k times. Um, you could do k squared minus 3k minus 18, or if you wanted to, you could factor it out and get k minus 6k plus 3. And that's what I'm going to do to show the full simplification. It just sort of depends on what the question asks you to do. But this is most simplified form as far as that goes. You can pull a 2 out in the front of the first, the first one if you want, but I'm just going to leave it like this. But anyway, that's it. This one's kind of a beast, I'm not going to lie. Um, it, it, this is probably one of the longer ones that you'll do if you have to do them like this. Um, so it shouldn't be so many that you have to do, but this is the process for doing it, and I hope that this whole thing, uh, even though it went a little long, is helpful.